Sometimes to figure out how to be profitable, you got to figure out how to not be profitable. And that may mean trying a bunch of strategies and styles and scans and other things that seemingly successful people do and that you try to replicate and doesn't work for you. It doesn't mean these people aren't successful either. It just means that they found something that works for them and, and you haven't yet. And what's, what's going for them isn't going to go for you. So when I first started trading futures, it was come up with one trade. So the trade I came up with was noticing that, and this was 10, 15 years, not 10, I don't even know, 16 years ago or something, but it was, okay, everyone's using these Fibonacci retracements. That's the big thing to do after a, a, a large move in the market. So there's the 382 and the 50%, and you know how you guys all heard of this stuff, obviously. And then it comes up there and it, and it sells down. Let's say it's a downtrend. It comes up, tests it, comes off. Well, if there's other support re- resistance there also, and maybe there's some bad news that day, that makes a lot of sense. It come off the first time. And the second time, the third time, it would come up there, it would come off, and then it would explode the other way when everyone was stuck selling it. And my trade was to buy that area, to basically go against the technicals. And it was especially powerful if it was a negative news day because people thought it would keep going down. So I mastered that one little trade. And then I started using like failed head and shoulders and trend line breaks that would break and fail and, and just kind of trying to screw people who were stuck chasing classic technical patterns. And that's I still do some of that stuff once in a while. But that was the first thing I did. So it was just very specific, very simple. And I'm looking at the stock world and I'm trying to figure out how to repurpose myself and use a lot of the news and events that I, that I did well with in the future market. So earnings are something I'm interested in because those are events and any kind of, I love stupid news. We've talked about a few of those, but Boeing right now has some news and I'm going to keep an eye on that. I think it could have some more to go, but that's one I'm, I'm watching, but the whole world is watching that, so it's not quite as exciting. But um, back to what we were talking about with the trade. So the first trade was this Fibonacci one I did. And now going into the stock world, it's, it's easy to say, oh, I'm just going to buy earnings winners or companies with great new technology. And it seems so easy to do, right? Just to go and look at Investor's Business Daily and find these scans. And it seems easy, but it's really not that easy because if you don't have another level of conviction, you get stopped out of everything and you just constantly stopped out of things. Some may have this strategy work for them and that's great. It's not worked for me. It's, it's not necessarily been a disaster. I dabbled in, in strategies like this, but I'm finding that that's probably not where I'm going to land. And things that work a lot better are going to have some sort of theme or trend and then some sort of counter move on something that makes very little sense to the theme or trend. And I can play it from the long or the short side. So it works in both markets. And that's where I see myself specializing. And then from there, building out and figuring out what are trades that I can do off of that. So my trade frequency may not be well, certainly not going to be what it used to. I used to trade, I mean, I guess a slow day for me was five to eight trades when I was day trading. In a busy market, you trade 30, 40 times a day sometimes. So this is, I might trade a couple times a week, maybe more, maybe less even. So it's hard to say right now, but I'm starting to zero in on where I'm probably going to land. And it's exciting to have for me to have this time frame where I can take my computer to a coffee shop and do research and put a trade on. I don't have to be in front of this huge command center all day, which I really enjoy doing for many years, but the priorities are shifting and I want a new challenge. So I kind of feel like a rookie again in some ways because I'm having to to relearn old habits, which is super tough to do. It, you have all this conditioning and you have all these things that you've gotten used to doing and you've been heavily rewarded for like a, a big thing I did in futures was I would press trades meaning that when it would I would buy the dip and then as it would go towards the highs I would add a lot more and then take a little bit off and keep some on and kind of massage it and that works great crypto 2017 that's a great strategy crypto 2018 not so much so that there's a ton of uh, awareness or uh, awareness to the cycle of the market Obviously, your own internal cycle, which is a different podcast about your own patterns and stuff of acting out. But for this, for this podcast, just thinking about what's going on in, in the overall market. And do you have some sort of a dashboard? And I'm learning that right now. In the stock market, when you're trading a little longer term, there's different sentiment and 
market breadth indicators that are very important to align your stock trades with, where when I traded futures, I would use the advanced decline line. I would really lean on the events for the day and the expectations, Fed, ECB, retail sales. And that was a lot of my roadmap would come from that stuff. And I didn't care quite as much about the overall market, even though I was aware of it, just because my time frame was shorter. So it didn't make as much sense. But now that it makes more sense to align those trades. So when I decide to size something, I'm going to have to take that into account as well. So there's going to be a little bit of a checklist of how does the overall market look after I develop my own thing for that. And then, okay, you like this trade, but you don't like the market. What do you do? Well, maybe you have to do it smaller. And then there's going to be stuff that lines up from the short side when everything is the market's weak or rallying in something that I don't like. And on really stupid news, that's a trade for me. That's going to be one of my bigger trades then. I did Facebook last year. That was a good trade I did on that where they were just rallying, rallying to 210, 220. And there was talk that they were going to have to pay a lot more costs to fend off privacy and regulatory issues, but you never saw it in the earnings. And then all of a sudden you got that bad earnings where you saw a 50% increase in expenses and headcount and stuff, but you weren't going to get any revenue from it and the stock cratered. And then it went down to like, I don't remember why I could say 160 and then rallied all the way back almost to 175 or 180 on some stupid news about JP Morgan and Facebook were going to share data to have some financial partnership which is who cares really. And that gave you that really good second chance trade in Facebook. And then it was down to 130 from there on a pretty quick straight line. And then, then that was the end of the trade for me. It got really negative and it reversed. And now it, who knows now it's looking like it's not where I, it's not the same as it was back then. It's a different trade now, so I'm not touching it, but moving into that's a comfort zone for me, things like that. So it's almost like I had to remember what futures was like when I was having my biggest periods of success and try to pull that same line of thinking and that edge. And I have to define it very specifically. So with the retracement trade for futures trading, you heard me talk about rules and it's even more powerful if it's blowing off bad news. And I knew other people would be stuck selling these technical levels. So I can kind of plan my trade around that. So the more I know about other participants and what they're doing and when they might be in trouble, the better I can figure out when that could happen. So news and events are a great time. And think about it also, if there's a good trend and there's stupid news that rushes it down against the trend, you have to think about the people who bought late are going to puke because they're in a bad spot with where they bought. They have to get out. Even if they know it's stupid, they probably have to get out. Eventually, it'll make them get out, right? We know how that feels. And the people who are early in the trend, they don't want to give back their money because they feel pretty good about seeing where that price has been printing and they don't like it coming back. So it creates emotional movement. It's like a gambler on tilt. At that, at that time, people are not thinking rationally. They're just thinking, protect what I have or get me out of this. And then the opportunity shows up. If, so isolating those and scanning for those, that's another thing that I'm looking in right now and, and figuring out how to be more efficient with that. But you can, the reason I'm telling you all this is because, not because anyone else is going to decide to do this strategy, and if you do, great. I mean, it's, it's not a secret. It's hard work, and it has to be executed properly. So it's an art form, really, but it's just one of many ideas that you could have success with. But I'm just talking about my progression as I kind of wander down this road and narrow down to what I want to do. And I'll keep talking as I get more focused, and I'll come on and say what where it's landed when it lands. But right now it's still work in process and it's going to be that way until, until it's not, I guess. And I've taken some, some reflections I have on the process where I've taken some hits that were bigger than I needed to because I have capital from the future's years. So I'm throwing more capital at something that I'm really new at actually over in the stock side, which is stupid because if I didn't have the capital, I wouldn't be doing that. But it's almost like I think since I, you know, I made money short-term futures trading that I should be able to go into uh, a longer-term stock trading and just chuck money at it that would be similar to what I would do in the futures. Well, that's just dumb, and I've been doing that a little bit too much, and it's cost me a few times, and so that's going to be corrected, and then I'll re-up my size when I start to dial in on my new, my new way of things. So that's kind of where I'm at with now, and hopefully this is semi-helpful to somebody at least.